What's going on and welcome on in. Today is going to be an August trade recap. So today is currently August 30th. Uh, it is the day before the last day of the month. I will not be trading tomorrow. I'll be traveling. So I wanted to do an August trade recap. We finished the month with a PL of negative $437. Um, this is my first red month since April. If I'm not mistaken, I think April was break even, March break even, I think it went back to February. Um, I really started tracking specifically in TradeZella post April. And so we are starting to gather a lot of good data. The platform that I'm using here is TradeZella. I'll leave links in the description of this video, like always, um, to TradeZella and any other resources that I have uh, used. But this should be a pretty constructive video um, for myself and maybe for you as well, hopefully for you as well, to, you know, understand things that you could do to improve um, as a trader. Uh, I'm by no means a professional. I am definitely not a professional. I am just an average guy that is trying to uh, build a strategy and a system that we can rely upon. And uh, I feel like I've got something that's pretty good. Uh, now it comes down to, I think, really learning more. And I've had some videos and I'll have more in the future. Learning more about myself and then how, or, or learning, as I learn about myself, doing things to mitigate downside and protect myself. Um, as you can see, just to the north of me, we have this graph and there are some larger days on this graph of red. I'm covering a little bit of it, but there are some bigger red candles here, or red bars and some smaller greens. So the first takeaway that I want to get into is this month for sure was a feeling out period, but also I needed and I decided, I, I made this change as I got towards the end of the month to change how I was losing. And when I say that, I mean, I was capping myself at around three trades. Well, there's a day of six, a four, some days there's four here. And I said, I will not lose more than $300. If I'm risking $100 max a trade, I can't lose more than $300. That's my max loss. And I, to be honest, I stuck to that pretty much for the entire month. And you can see that there is not a day, I'm gonna get myself out of the way, there's actually not a day that exceeds that. Well, there is one that goes 303, but okay. Little margin error there, it's, it's about 300 bucks. So we did okay, but there's too many bigger losses in here versus wins. Now you go, okay, that's an easy fix your average win loss must be bad. You must be risking more than you're looking to gain. No, actually that's not the case. My average win loss is positive. A 1.34 average win loss is actually, in my opinion, for my strategy, really good. Uh, based on my win rates of prior months that I had previously kind of talked about in other videos, you can go back to other trade recaps. I mean, it was pretty, that, that, that's a good, we were actually not, not always above one. Um, so that's good. Because if you have a 50% win rate or even a 48% win rate, that's a profitable strategy right there, by the way. So that's not the problem. Uh, it's The problem was that I was taking too many when things weren't working. And then that accelerated to, as I started to lose, I would then toss my strategy to the side and go, no, I'm going to try this and this and this. That I cannot do. And there's data to back it up. So on the surface, in a nutshell, if you will, um, that's like the, those are the, some of the biggest takeaways. And so then at the end, I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to be doing going forward to hopefully improve upon that for the next months. Now, I don't want to get into the, the August bias where if you ask or hear, you'll probably see, you know, a lot of traders or people will say, or even, you know, people on social media will say that, you know, August is choppy. It's not great. Don't trade August. You know, whatever. I didn't want to come into the month with that bias. Had I come into the month with that bias, I probably could have saved myself. Maybe I could have been green. I don't know. Uh, I could have saved myself a couple hundred bucks. But in the grand scheme, a couple hundred bucks is not a huge deal in my in my situation right now, so I'm not super worried about that. Uh, P and L is not that's not that's actually you know, yeah, that can, I can come back from that in a week, you know, or two, not that bad. So I'm not super pissed about you know a four hundred dollar month uh, in the red. So I wanted to let my trading speak for itself and try it, do it, 
and then take that data and then move forward and I'll have this data for next year. So that's the plan where that's the intention behind trading this month as much as I did. 74 trades, probably too many trades, probably too many trades. Um, and again, I probably can cut down on those bigger days and I'll explain what I'm going to do in the future um, about those. So let's go to the report section here on TradeZilla. Inside of this, now I'm blocking some, so I, I apologize um, ahead of time, but also I will try to get myself off the screen when I can. So it gives you some data here. Uh, I don't need to worry too much about a lot of this. I will say that our average hold time on winning trades is 36 minutes. Our average hold time for losers is 24. That's because on losers, stop losses get hit faster in my, well, stop losses get hit because it doesn't work, generally speaking. And then on winners, there's some that will be riding out for more that I'll scale out slowly so that can extend their their lifespan, which is kind of... So there's not like, that's not a, a, a piece of data to go, oh, you know, if I'm in this too long, no, I, no that makes sense. That, that all kind of makes sense. And I don't really have anything else to say there. If I go to detailed PL. here's where it gets fun. I'm going to get myself out of the way for a second here. So you're going to see that we have trade distribution by day of the week. Um, not really a big change, like, you know, midweek, yeah, maybe some more trades, but not super surprised. Maybe there's Mondays off or Fridays off, whatever. Uh, performance by day of the week. We can see that Tuesdays and Wednesdays are my best. Fridays were my worst by far. Was that because I was trying to catch up? I was pissed or this or that? I don't know. We only had, really, we had one Friday that was really bad. That was last Friday. It was a $300 loss day, which probably skews this data a little bit. So is there something to take away from this? I don't want to take it away from just one month. But notable that we were not good on Fridays, but that is skewed by, you know, one large loss there. Okay. Time. Here's where things get a little more interesting. So time of day, what I had found this month specifically, and this is not the case all the time, was that that late morning period for me around 11 a.m. was the best. And then the end of the day. Why? We had a lot more choppiness early on, which doesn't favor my strategy. Okay. If I move this time interval down to 30 minutes, it's a little easier to see. You can kind of see anything near the open, avoid. Uh, and then after that, it's it gets a little bit better, but just tells me, all, all I'm going to say is avoid the open. And that's really it. Okay, trade duration, we kind of have already a, an idea of this. Um, not surprised, you know, trades that last under 10 minutes uh, are red because their stop losses are getting hit. Trades that last longer are green because we're trending in the right direction and we're locking and gains and skilling out, okay? Price, I only trade options here. This is only options, day trade options. Um, cheap ones, not good. More expensive option contracts, I've done better. I've always seemed to have th have this. Maybe there's something to that, and uh, I will kind of lean into that a little bit more potentially in the coming months, but um, it seems like the option contracts that are more expensive, I do well, believe it or not. Volume. Um, yeah, not really nothing to talk about there, just how many contracts I'm trading based off the price of them. Instruments. Here we go. Now, I traded NVIDIA the most this month. This is my top 10. NVIDIA was the most. Uh, Tesla was up there. Google was up there because... Google's pretty strong. And then Apple's there. So mostly NVIDIA was the biggest the biggest bad boy there. And I love NVIDIA. I love it. Uh, and it was my best stock, believe it or not. So good news that the, the stocks I traded the most were my best stocks. And then as you get into lesser traded stocks, you can kind of see we didn't do as well on some of these stocks that we didn't trade as much. Sectors, not really something that matters to me. Setups, here we go. So because of the month of August was generally speaking a weaker month in the S&P, end of July into August was selling off, pulling back, and then we started to bounce in the end, at the end of the month. Um, there were more bear flags, and there's like two mains. I, I don't want to call them, like they're not, you can draw a bear flag 17 different ways if you really wanted to. Um, some will call a descending wedge. Or, like you can call it a bunch of different things. Either way, I classify a bear flag as big move down, consolidation, clear level of support, and then break that support, go. That's what I de declare a bear flag. And then both flags, same thing on the opposite side. Big move up, consolidation, clear level of resistance, break that resistance and go. That's what I'm looking for. Simple as that. 
I did trade this other setup once was a failed breakout in a larger downtrend. And then the opposite with this with this to this would be a failed breakout breakdown in a larger uptrend. That's like the opposite of my strategy. I don't want to trade that, but it's like when the market's kind of behaving the way that it did the beginning of August, you know, and you have these like choppy days where we're not we're seeing a lot of mixed signals. I think that it's worth putting under my belt or at least being able to trade here and there. But that said, the data tells us here that when we trade bear flags, we lose or we lost this month. We traded bull flags, we won. Now, what, what does this tell me? This tells me that with this data that I have, now you're like, okay, this doesn't make any sense. If you're red, how is this? How are you net green? I'll explain that in a second or that'll be shown next. Um, inside of this, you have, it really shows we're not, we were not getting follow through to the downside with those bear flags. So price moving down, consolidating, and then moving down more. We were not getting as much of that in the move down that uh, to net me green. That's what it was telling me. So if you want to me bring that out to a bigger time span that tells you it was a chopping move down, was not a momentum based, a big time momentum move down. Um, and it was again, right? Bigger picture. It was a pullback on the S and P overall. The market's pulled back in a bigger picture uptrend from last year. So net, it could kind of make sense. Like the overall trend was up. So when you start looking at the big picture data, you know your your better bets are still going to be on the upside, and that's where they were. So it's funny to look at that when you look at really when you bring it down. Like when you really narrow it down, like it really comes down to probabilities like that. This just, again, shows you more of that. What, what do I mean by that? So if I jump back to the S and P, you know, and go to this like daily chart or I'm, you know, zoom out, like, what do you, what do you see? Right. The S and P since last October is this. Yes. There are pullbacks inside of here. Yes. Right. We just went through a decent, like five, six percent pullback, whatever it was, but it was in a bigger picture uptrend. So when you're fighting the bigger picture over a larger series of trades, you tend to lose. And so that was kind of the deal. So that's just what it tells me. Okay. So that's that now mistakes. So you say, okay, how do you, you know, how did, how did you lose? Well, there were some mistakes here. Uh, actually tags will be where, where I'm going to have it. A couple little things here. Enter early first 15 minutes are things that I, I avoid higher time frame choppiness, impatience, stopping out too early. A couple little things I noted here. Um, the one mistake if you will, which there's not a lot of mistakes here, but if the one mistake, if you will, that was a positive was actually entering early. So that tells me if I'm going to make a mistake, enter early because I must have some, a, a decent knack for anticipating is what I mean. Anticipating a break, anticipating a move down or continuation. That's what it's telling me. Now tags, uh, not to system. This is where I, I we, we have not to system two system means I only trade those two patterns up or down. Um, if I traded outside of that system, I lost. And there was 16 trades outside of the system. And that essentially will account for why we're red. If we didn't trade, if we traded to the system, we'd be green. We did not all the time and you're not going to be perfect, but it was very, very clear that our win rate was terrible. We lost a lot. Our win rate on or our winning percentage on uh, not system trades, we only won on 13% of those trades versus on trades that were too system, we were 50-50, which you think, oh, that's not that good. Well, guess what? 50-50 with good risk management is very good in the market. So I'm not, I'm not mad about that at all. A couple other things here that I'm not going to dive really too deep into, um, but there's more data that you can dive into on Tradezilla if you want to check it out um, further. But that was the deal. When I go to options, here's the last piece. Days to expiration. Here's one more thing as I get into now what we're going to do going forward. Here's what I want to touch on quickly uh, and, and seriously. Okay, 10 plus days out. I took 35 trades this month. Why was this a ter why was this a bad idea in a choppier month or, or or in general it doesn't matter it's in general I think that that if I eliminate this uh I'm going to be in a better spot because 
when you get a little bit of a break to the upside or downside and it doesn't go enough to take profits and then it comes back and stops you out, like that's what I saw happening so much this month, especially early on in the month. But then I started playing some, you know, couple days out, you know, a week or two out, a little bit closer, and now they, they, they had better results. It was these that screwed me because the contracts didn't move enough. And so in a choppy environment, not good. And when I have a, a general rule of thumb of like a 10% stop loss and I'm looking for 10 plus percent on the, the take profit, you can get that faster when you have breaks, but when you play closer to the money or closer to expiration, sorry, options. So going forward, bringing it back home, onto this page. I'll bring myself back up. What are we going to do next month? Or what are we thinking about to handle some of the problems? Well, we know that when we trade our system, we are green. Even in a choppy month that ha didn't have a great win rate. So let's just start there. Number two, we're going to have a two loss rule of thumb. So if we have two losses, that would be a max loss of $200. We can trade one more time, but that trade must, must, must be half size. And it must be to our system, only trading the setups that are in our system. Okay. So that means our worst case scenario would be a $250 loss day. Maybe it has to be adjusted. I might, might have to just get it cut at two. I don't know but I'm going to start there and see how it goes. So just kind of bringing that back, bringing that risk in a little bit tighter. Um, okay, so there's that. Talk about the system. And now in terms of going forward to next month, what else are we going to do? So we talk about the risk management. We are going to trade less. The game plan is to trade less. I, I have found that trading more leads to more mentally feeling burnt out and um, and also more losses. So ideally, I come in one or two things, and that's it. We hit we hit it and quit it, uh, and that's the plan. Hopefully, going forward. So all that said, this is my trade recap for the month of August. Um, it was a red month, but I think there was a lot of constructive things that we got out of this month, and a lot of good data to go back and dive into. So if you want to check out Tradezilla, I'll leave a link to that below. Like always, um, to track and journal all these trades like me here, uh, I think it's worthwhile. And uh, if you are serious about tracking in your trading and stuff, I think it's uh, in your best interest. Not to mention you can write it off if, if it comes tax time, if it's, you know, talk to your advisor, but you could potentially write it off if it comes tax time. That said, thanks so much for watching. Leave a like on the video, hit the thumbs up button, and consider subscribing if you want to see more of these. I'm posting my trade recaps pretty much every single day that I do trade. And then at a minimum every month, we'll have a recap like this. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.